Hi, this is David with the Discount Dragon again, and we are back with more in art instruction and tutorials. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, how I make one of the pieces of art that I frequently do, which is polymer clay dragon claws. And this is kind of what it looks like in the finished version. We have it mounted against various backgrounds, painted with a couple different colors of paint, and in a nice little frame. So it turns out pretty good. It has a good level of detail. And I'll just set that down there. So, in the last mold making video, I showed you how we use the press mold, which is a custom made mold for our own design, composed of two pieces of cement based plaster, top and bottom as well as two pieces of amazing mold putty, a silicone based mold putty. The polymer clay is pressed firmly down into here with a piece of floral wire on the back to give it a little support. Then it's done over here as well. Mold is put together like that. A lot of force is exerted until you feel everything's been pressed in securely and you don't have too much extra mold, too much extra uh, clay in the way. Then, you end up with a piece like this, uh, which as you can see, has the clay kind of forced out of the edge of the design, and this is going to need to be removed before we have a finished piece. So I just kind of go in here and scrape it down with a blade, and blend it a bit until the mold defects go away. It takes a little bit of work, but as you can see it's pretty easy. The clay is very soft even after being baked. And we end up with this, which is an unpainted and uh, you know still slightly flawed piece. And it is multicolored because we use different sorts of clay. Uh, you do still have a mold line here. And you can keep digging down with the with the razor blade, uh, but you're going to lose some of the original design. So usually when I get to this point where you've just got a line, I'll take a little bit of Sculpey or Fimo, just take it like that and blend it in so your mold line goes away finally without having to lose too much material. So you do that all the way along your mold lines and blend it in nicely. And you get this. <laughs> uh, this is a blended version of this where all the mold lines are gone and I also took some acrylic paint and I just coated the whole thing for a nice base coat. And since the details down here, the little texturing details, are going to be dark anyway, I started with a dark coat to use as the base coat. Now these are the pieces of floral wire I'm going to use to mount it to a backing later, like this. And it doesn't show it back there. But essentially this is mounted onto foam, foam core board. Uh, what you do is you take a, I take a tool like this, which is a little drill tool. And since the clay is relatively soft, you just go in here and you drill a hole there, drill a hole there and push these wires in with some more oven-baked clay, bake it once more, and then you've got mounting wires attached. So at this point we're in pretty good shape, but we do still need to paint it. And for that, get our palette. Now one of the things I use that's amazingly helpful is a gloss, medium, and varnish all in one. And mostly, I don't even use it as a varnish. I use it as a paint reinforcement, which speeds up the painting process tremendously. You get a little bit of the gloss medium and varnish. And we get some paint in here. I like keeping it a little translucent, so I don't go with a large amount of paint, I just, you, you know, maybe 50-50 or even a little bit less. 
And I usually go with an off-white, since this is technically supposed to be bone. So we've got a little dab of brown there, and a little dab of yellow over here, just so it's not stark white. A little dab of brown, mix it in. So you can see it's kind of a nice ultralight, almost beige, almost a bone color. And just a little dab of yellow to work that in. And of course you can go with any color scheme you want, depending on what sort of final effect you want. This one here, I did in a very white sort of palette with some pinks built in, because this is supposed to be for a dragon princess. <laughs> but usually um, I go for more of a archaeological look. So as you'll notice, as soon as I start brushing on this first layer, the detail really starts jumping out at you. So go over with a white, and then usually down in the cracks I'll put like green or brown or other stuff to show that it's aged and discolored. And you just keep going with different layers until you get a look you like. And usually I put a lot of brush strokes in here. Uh, now you can apply paint with something other than a brush, which gets rid of the brush strokes. Something like a paper towel. You can just tear off a little bit, dip some in there, and just, you know, kind of rub it through and, you know, get a non-brushed look. But sometimes it just doesn't give me the control I want, so I just take the brush and, like, go very lightly, a whole lot, maybe in different directions, and you don't end up with a lot of obvious brush strokes. And I'll get one of the more archaeological looking ones and show that to you. It is going to be right back here. This is one of the ones that's more of a fossil look. Now the advantage of adding the acrylic medium for the gloss glaze and gloss medium to this is you cut out all the time waiting for one layer to dry before adding another layer, because the acrylics dry extremely fast, maybe even a, little, even a little faster than you'd like. So you can paint this on, and since this is stronger and fast drying, uh, you can take this and say, well, I want to put on my next layer, and do it almost immediately. Uh, now I'm going to add in this, which is a technically a wood stain, but it is a acrylic wood stain. So we can get away with this. Now if you did this without adding the liquid, sorry, without adding the, uh, the, the uh, gloss medium and stain, uh, sorry, the gloss medium and varnish, uh, if you started doing this, what would happen is the layer, layer below would instantly start falling off. It would start bunching up and being destroyed by our brushing motions at this point. But you see, I'm doing it right on top of it, and it's not bothering anything. So you got a lot more flexibility and a lot more speed in finishing these pieces off. If you have a lack of patience or a lack of time, it is fantastic to use some of these gloss mediums. So, as you can tell, we've got the white and the brown there. It's giving us a little bit of an aged look. And you can take this and go back to your white and throw some of that back in. Now we've got kind of an in-between shade since we've been mixing this. And you know, just keep playing around with it until you get a look you like. It's pretty easy to do with things like bone or if you've got a theme going, such as like Dragon Princess. Uh, because you're shooting for a pre-specified sort of look, and you know you know where you're headed. So that is our dragon claw. Sometimes we also label them as raptor claws or various other mythological creatures. So you can make your aged fossil claw, or you can make your fantasy claw. 
And I'd say go out, try your own version. It's a lot of fun. And until next time, this is Viscount Dragon.